Hello friends. Today we will take the seventh task in the GTO series that is individual obstacle. In the GTO two day individual obstacle is the first task and the seventh task in the overall GTO series. So let's take the briefing for individual obstacle. <clears throat> Gentlemen, this task is called as individual obstacles. It consists of 10 obstacles which has to be gone through by each one of you individually in 3 minutes. The obstacles are numbered from 1 to 10. The number on the obstacle also indicates the point you will get if you tackle it successfully. Therefore, if you do all the 10 obstacles successfully within the time allotted to you, you will secu uh, secure 55 points. When I take you around the obstacle course, you will find that these obstacles are not serially arranged. You are at liberty to tackle these obstacles in any order that you like. If you find that you are losing too much of time on any obstacle, you may leave it if you like and come back and do it again later. If you complete all the 10 obstacles and have some time still left to you, you can repeat the obstacles and depending upon which of the obstacle you, re you repeat, you will get that many extra points. Remember gentlemen, no repetition is allowed till you have completed all the 10 obstacles and even while repeating, you are not allowed to go over the same obstacle more than once. I shall now show you these obstacles and explain what is required to be done. I will then give you two minutes to go around the obstacle course. Thereafter, I shall explain to you how I propose to conduct this task. Are there any questions? After this, the GTO will After this, the GTO will take you around the obstacle course and show you each of these obstacles. And once you are shown around all the 10 obstacles and demonstration is given, you will be given two minutes to go around the obstacle course and plan your you know, mental strategy in which order you want to do and all those stuff. And once you are finished with that two minutes, you will be called back and the balance part of the briefing will be conducted, which is like this. Gentlemen, I have with me a visual and a stopwatch. We shall start with chest number one and others will follow him by turn in numerical sequence. The sequence will be spelt out to you, whether it is one to 10 or 10 to one. We shall start with chest number one and others will follow him by turn in numerical sequence. Number one will stand in front of the obstacle from where he wants to start. Others will sit on that bench with their backs toward the obstacle. Please do not look back at your friends while they are doing these obstacles. I shall blow the whistle to start off number one and time him. Half a min minute before his time is over, I shall shout next. Number two will immediately run up to the obstacle from where he wants to start, but will wait for my visual. This will also indicate that number one, that half a minute is left for him. When I blow the visual next, it will signify the termination of number one's time and commencement of number two's time. Number one will come down from whichever obstacle he is doing at that time and go and sit on those benches. I shall follow the same procedure for all of you. 
there is a first aid box kept with the groundsman and if any one of you pick up any bruises he will apply the medicine are there any questions so this is the way the briefing for the individual obstacle will be done and thereafter chest number one who is the first person he will remain with the gto he will ask him to go and stand in front of whichever obstacle he wants to start others will run and go and sit on the bench which is indicated by the gto and in that sense all of them will continue happening now uh, i will request you to put your comments so that i understand that how was this video benefited if you have any doubts you can put it and in the second part of this video i'll show you the various obstacles uh, all the obstacle 1 to 10 and explain you how it needs to be done and the third part of the video i'll tell you what all physical activities you need to do so that you develop that physical capability that you're able to get over these obstacles easily so with that uh, request to put your comments thank you and may god bless you thank you very much So the first obstacle is called single ramp. Now the marks that are indicated against each of these obstacles are also the marks that you're going to get if you're able to do it successfully. So in the single ramp, you can see a ramp and a sand pit in front. You have to come running, climb over the ramp and jump into the sand pit. So it's a pretty easy task, obstacle. And if you do it correctly, you get one marks. Now you can see this girl doing single ramp. You have to walk over this ramp and jump into the sand pit. The marks are 1. So the obstacle number 2 is called long jump, oblique barrel jump. Now you can see there are two barrels placed in tandem. B is written, B is for boys. The color of the barrels are red. And you can see on top of it there are barbed wires if you are a male you have to run and jump over these two barrels onto the sand pit and if you're a girl instead of two barrels you have only one color is red and there's no barbed wire and you have to take a run from here and jump and land onto the sand pit if you're able to do it correctly you will get two marks for doing it correct so that's obstacle number so let's now see obstacle number three this is called the balancing beam you can see there are three beams beam number one two and three you can either climb up from this side or you can climb up from the other side the beams are placed inclined and zigzag and what you're supposed to do is you have to climb up from any of the sides and walk over the beams without falling down and get across on the other side the marks you will get for doing it correctly is three now body balance is an important important factor here a piece of advice if you feel that you're going to lose balance and fall down it's better to fall down otherwise you'll get hurt jump to one side and do not try to run over this because the beam width is very less so there is a probability possibility of you slipping and injuring yourself so don't run and in case of rainy season make sure you take adequate care because your you know shoes will be slippery and there's a possibility of injury so take that precaution so obstacle number three balancing beam the marks you'll get is three Let's see the next obstacle. Obstacle number four is called screen jump. You have a ramp, one same as it was in the PGT, uh, sorry, command, uh, no, obstacle number one. In front of it, there is a screen that is placed. What you have to do is you have to come running and then jump over the screen into the sand pit. This person who is jumping, this is a wrong demo of jumping. He's fall, going to fall flat on his face. So not this way, you have to take a clean jump and land into the sand pit. Now in case of girls, the height is slightly lower than what it is for boys. For example, so if it's here, 
now this height will be adjusted by the groundsman in case while jumping if your leg touches the screen it will fall down the groundsman will fix it for you and the marks will only be counted if you are able to jump it without touching the screen so that's what's called screen jump marks you'll get is four so let's see the next obstacle it is obstacle number five burma bridge now you can see there are two ladders on one on the left side one on the right and two ropes you can use any side you can either use the left side ladder or the rope or the right side ladder or the rope to climb up and then once you climb up what you are supposed to do is hold the top rope and walk over the bottom rope now just make sure that you don't lift your leg and cross it like this there is a probability of the ropes shaking and you may even you know start hanging from the top rope instead of that it's better that if you move your legs over the rope sliding over the rope without crossing it that's more easier this task appears difficult because of the height but actually it is not if you have no fear of height now you can use the ladder or the rope to go up and while once you cross the on the other side you can get down using the rope or the ladder either way the marks does not change i will suggest you if you're not adequately fit there is no point trying to climb up using the rope and climb up uh, down using the rope it is better to use ladder for both purposes because that will conserve your energy anyway the marks are same so that's burma bridge the points you'll get is five let's see the next obstacle obstacle number six is called the tarzan swing now as the name suggests you are supposed to climb up using this ladder and stand on top of this platform on this platform the groundsman will hand over you the rope hold it as as high as possible pull your shoulders up raise your toes so that you attain maximum height and then take a swing and move forward now you can see there is a brick here red brick similarly there will be a brick on the other side the imaginary line joining those two bricks you have to cross that line and then land and leave the rope the rope will go back but you have to jump ahead of this imaginary line if you touch anywhere behind it will not work now you have to ensure that you hold the rope as high as possible and as tight as possible because if you don't do that you will come straight vertical down that may not help you do this obstacle now some people may have fear of height like you can see in this photograph once you climb up whether you have height or not height fear of height or not i'll suggest you do it because if you get down from the platform without doing it saying ki sir mujhe dar lag raha that can cost you very very badly because you are demonstrating that fear of phobia height is so much that it's prohibiting you from taking that calculated risk and you can be penalized for that very very severely so first of all come better prepared be physically fit have your upper body strength built up you know push up benches and all those things that i i'll show you in the last slide only then you will be able to do it otherwise the fear takes over so please make sure in the influence of fear if you get down from the ramp your story is over obstacle number 7 it is called double ramp what you have to do is using this ladder climb up on the top platform stand here and then take a jump on to the bottom one like this girl is doing and once you land here stabilize yourself and again jump into the sand pit so there are two levels at which you have to perform now please make sure you stand and jump and not sit here and then take a jump that will not be uh, correct because that's you're breaking the instructions you have to stand and jump and make sure that your body has adequate balance so that you're able to hold yourself on the second lower platform and then jump into the sand pit the marks you'll get is 7 for doing it correct the name of the obstacle is double ramp let's see obstacle number 8 it is called double ditch 
Now you can see there are two ditch. One is a slightly bigger one. Second is a smaller one in width. In between there is a wide platform where you can see this mat placed. Now on the first ditch you have a vertical rope hanging in the middle of the ditch. What you have to do is you have to take a run from behind and then take a jump, hold the rope the way this girl is holding it and along with the swing of the rope come here, land here and leave the rope. The rope goes back and thereafter you have to take a jump across the second ditch. So that's why it's called double ditch. The first ditch you don't have to take a long jump, you have to take a jump, hold the rope, swing with the rope, land on the platform, middle platform, leave the rope and then take the jump over the second one. Obstacle number 8. Marks will get its 8. Double ditch. Now in case of girls, this obstacle is optional. That is if you want to do, you can do it. Otherwise you can leave, They'll not. you will not be penalized for that. So that's an optional uh, obstacle for you. Karna to karo, agar fit ho, aapko lagta kar lo to karo. Otherwise koi isko jabardasti karne ki jarurat nahi hai. Obstacle number 8. Double ditch. Obstacle number 9. Commando walk. Now you can see there is an inclined ladder here and also there is an inclined ladder on the other side. What you have to do is you can climb up from any of the side like this boy has climbed up from here. Now the sides are painted red both sides so you cannot touch it. So you have to climb up and walk over the horizontal platform and then climb over these steps and on top of this you have to stand with both legs on that. Sometimes the GTO says standing there to shout your favorite actor or actress or whatever. The purpose of that is to make sure that you step on that for two seconds and then you know do that shouting part. The, more than the shouting what is required is that you actually stand there. Some people what do they do? They keep one leg here, second leg here, they sit here and then take a turn. That will not be allowed. And then you can get down from the opposite sides and get down on the other side. If you do it, how much marks will you get? You will get 9 marks. What is the name of the obstacle? Commando Walk. Let's see the last obstacle, obstacle number 10. It is called Tiger Leap. As the name suggests, you have to leap and catch on, hold on to the rope that is in front of you in case of Tarzan Swing. The rope was handed over to you and you were required to take a swing and cross the uh, imaginary line. In this case, obstacle number 10, tiger leap. What you do is you have to climb up using the ladder, stand here. The rope will not be handed over to you. So the rope will be in front of you and then you have to take a jump the way this girl has taken. And there is a ribbon which is there. For example, let's say here. So you have to hold, make the first grip on or above the ribbon. You cannot do it below the ribbon and once you make a good grip, hold it tight and then gradually come down and land. That's tiger leap. If you do it correctly, you get 10 marks. Now this obstacle again, in case of girls, this is optional. If you want to do it, you can do it. Otherwise, you can skip it. So tiger leap. With this, you complete all the 10 obstacles. And this you have to do it in three minutes. And in case if you still have some time left after doing all the 10 correctly, including those which you missed, you can repeat the obstacle. And while repeating also, you cannot repeat the same obstacle again and again. That has already been conveyed in the GOR briefing. So that's the way this task is conducted. Each individual is given three minutes and 10 obstacles. So I hope you got some idea about what needs to be done and what is the level of physical fitness required. Now I will show you two approaches to do these 10 obstacles in three minutes and you have to tell me what is the advantage or disadvantage in each case. So approach to do individual obstacle. For example, let us say these are the 10 obstacle placed randomly. The GTO sits on one side and the moment he says ready. So this is the candidate and let's see GTO says start or the visual. So this is the way he starts. Look at this obstacle number one, two, three, four, five, six. What is he doing? 
this candidate is trying to attempt each obstacle in a sequence so if i ask you what are the advantages and what are the disadvantages i don't think there is any advantage there's large number of disadvantages first of all these obstacles are placed in a random order so you will be searching for them one after the other in sequence that will consume a lot of time and secondly since they are placed in a random order the distance that you will have to run in the process of doing it sequentially will be much larger so you will waste a lot of time running between the obstacles and identifying where is the next obstacle and you will become more tired and your allotted time of 3 minutes a lot of time will get wasted in simply running between the obstacle so i don't think this is a very efficient way to do it do post your comments on this the second approach to doing it is so this is you and the gto says start and this is the way you go you start with three six four whatever is coming in front of you you're taking it first you're not bothered about which is that and which is that anyway you have to do all of them so after two you still have time so once you finish with all of them if you still have time you can do the obstacle number 10 7 and 9 and go back by in case your time or depending upon so what is the advantage one you don't have to remember the sequence whatever comes you have to do it and simply remember that you already done it the running between the obstacle is reduced so you have more time to do it with the obstacle rather than running in between the obstacle course so i will suggest you to go for a this kind of a format rather than going for a one two three sequence may so i hope uh, uh, I, my idea has been understood by you you have to build up your capacity you know? so i'll suggest you as communicated by the ssbs and academies that you must jog five kilometers every day jog public run public speed walk 400 meter sprint 30 push-ups 30 benches 20 pull-ups you know you must play some game basketball football volleyball tennis or whatever badminton squash and manage your weight if you don't do it we had a case in 2015 where 40 cadets from the nda they left nda because they could not cope up with the physical part of the training that's very unfortunate having spent so much of money efforts and time if you decide to leave academy that's a shameful act so it's better that you build up your capacities before getting into these kind of situation so i hope you will work on yourself and uh, this video has given you some clarity about what needs to be done so do post your comment thank you